extremists have sought to destroy the peace process just as it was beginning to deliver. The only way into Sukumi is by air. Virtually the only passengers are Georgian soldiers and their priests who volunteered to try and save the city from the Abkhazian rebels besieging it. On the ground, chaos. Hundreds of desperate civilians trying to fight their way on board every plane. Soldiers fire in the air to drive them back. Once Sukumi was a holiday resort, today refugees smash buildings and shell fire. The shells are fired by Abkhazian troops, allegedly helped by elements of the Russian army. At least 500 people have died in the indiscriminate bombardment. Leading the fight to hold the city is the Georgian leader Edward Shevardnadze, known in the West as the former Soviet foreign minister under Gorbachev. With his bodyguards in the outer office, Shevardnadze has come close to death several times when shells hit the building. It is very dangerous because the enemy is coming into the city. The people are fighting, but there is panic. Next morning, one of Shevardnadze's top commanders took a busload of troops to the north of the city where the Georgian defenses were crumbling. At the front, General Adamia accused one officer of cowardice. Then the general led his men forward in a desperate attempt to throw back the Abkhazians, covering their push, a Georgian anti-aircraft cannon. But the attack broke down under a hail of shell fire that had us diving for cover. As the battle turned against the Georgians, buses came for the wounded. Screaming in agony, soldiers were dragged on board. ITN cameraman John Steele bandaged a Georgian soldier. At the hospital, a stream of casualties. A message to the city that the counterattack had failed. With many of his soldiers openly panicking, it's only Shevardnadze's presence here, his strength of will, his encouragement to his own soldiers that is keeping this city in Georgian hands. But right now, not even he would be able to say how much longer they will be able to hold out. Back at the airport, despair was turning to anger. Soldiers pleaded with a pilot to let our crew on board. We got on, but as the crew struggled to shut the doors for takeoff, news came through that another aircraft trying to land had been shot down. Then, after the Georgians had warned the crowd to scatter, the sound of incoming shells. Later that night, our pilot decided to make a run for it with his lights out. 